Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to the next lesson in the C++ series. In this lesson, we're going to be reviewing value initialization, that is zero initialization that we learned about in the previous lesson. So make sure you check that out if you want an in-depth look. And then we're going to talk about in-class initialization for our member variables and some of the different rules and just how this works so you can design better classes. So with that said, let's go ahead and look at an example. All right, so just popping in here as a review, last time we created this entity object, which has a few fields here. Now I'm going to go ahead and run this example here by just uh, saving my code and recompiling, rerunning. And again, we get zeros in each of the fields because we created this object with the curly braces here. Now, as a review, if we get rid of the curly braces here, we will not do the zero initialization and we might just get random numbers here. And that's the danger. And typically, most of the time, our defaults that we want would be things that are just zero initialized. Now, with that said, what if we don't want things that are just zero? So in this lesson, I want to go ahead and talk about in-class initializers. OK, so let's go ahead and take a look here. So what I've got here, and I'll go ahead and clear this screen, is that I can actually go into my class and put curly braces here. So I could put a four in here or maybe a five. And maybe for this one, I do, in fact, want it to be a null pointer. And I'll go ahead and recompile this. It compiles just fine. Rerun it. And now we can see four and five here. So just like magic, we can see that this is working and doing the right thing here. Now, just a word here, because we have seen curly braces. And in fact, I could go ahead and switch these to parentheses. And let's go ahead and see if this works here. And I'll just do it for the four and the five. And in this case, well, it's a little bit confused because it's thinking that we're doing some sort of function call here. So in this case, when using our initializers here, we should, in fact, use curly braces. Now, again, what the curly braces get us, so let's go ahead and show here uh, if I fix this so it'll compile. But what again if I try to put something like 0.24 or 5.2? And again, we'll be preventing any sort of conversions from happening, these narrowing conversions here. So this must truly be an integer, and it won't automatically cast from a double. So again, that's a little bit of a review from a previous lesson here. OK, now let's go ahead and say that we provide some defaults here. And I'm going to put 0 and maybe 7 here, just so there's something interesting, or maybe 1 and 7 here. Now, what happens if we go ahead and, for instance, initialize this with curly braces, like we learned last time. Well, what's going to be favored? The 1 and the 7, or is this just going to zero out everything? So if I compile this and I run it, well, since we were explicit and we said 1 and 7 is how we want to initialize these, that's what we'll get here. So that's sort of the precedence of order. Now let's go ahead and add a constructor here, entity, and I could go ahead and set, you know, x equal to 1 here, or maybe some other value like 2. Um, but again, we've learned about member initializer lists, which are a little bit more efficient. And I could do x here. And let's just go ahead and put 2, y as, say, value 3, and our collection, again, as null pointer. And I'll go ahead and put name as just the empty string here. So again, same exercise here. I have my constructor here, and this compiles fine. But what's going to be preferred? Am I going to zero initialize things? Am I going to take what's the in-class initializer here or what's in the constructor? So when I create this object, again, I'm going to take what's in the constructor here. So again, a higher level of precedence. Now, if I have constructors, for instance, where I don't specify these values or for whatever reason, I don't have all the parameters here, then we'll fall back and use the in-class initializer. And if I still don't have that, then we'll just zero initialize everything here. OK, so that's sort of the order of precedence here. And again, just to show one more scenario and to sort of review things, um, if I try to do something like 2.7 here for one of these parameters, again, I'll get that narrowing error. Now, in this instance here in my member initializer list, I could put parentheses that is allowed here. 
um, because it's not as ambiguous as when I put parentheses here for if this is a function call, for example. Uh, but this is just initializing some uh, variable here, and that is clear what's happening here. Okay, but in general, I'll prefer the curly braces so that we can capture errors. Like again, I'm going to show you where we have this narrowing conversion. Okay, so let's go ahead and fix that and just set it to um, some default. Again, probably zero here. Uh, we'll do the trick here. Okay, so those are some tips on, again, initializing your classes. And in general, we don't want to rely on the compiler to give us some default or otherwise the behavior is not specified. We want to zero initialize things explicitly. Or again, if you're writing code, which I often see here, where you have folks writing uh, a VEC3, for instance, and a float X and Y and Z, that we would want to zero initialize this, either by creating a constructor or when constructing this object here, again, the VEC3 with the curly braces here. That way we will get zero for each of the member variables here and we'll be a little bit safer in our code. All right, so with that said, we've now learned about the in-class initializers, a little bit about the precedence of the rules in which things are specified, and why we should probably just specify some defaults or zero values in our classes to help write some safer code. All right, with that said, I hope you learned a new technique. I hope this series has been helpful, and we'll continue to look at some other just little details about classes in some following videos. So I hope you'll check those out soon. We'll see you then, folks.